Welcome, it's Adrian Bow and Happy New Year. Today, I'm on Vicar Street out the front of the Coogee Bay Boutique Hotel in the wonderful precinct of Coogee to relate the story of an extraordinary local legend that once lived in this very street at number two. Charles Bliss was born in 1897 in what has since become Romania, but back then was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In fact, his real name was Karl Kazel Blitz, spelt B-L-I-T-Z, from a Jewish family where he grew up in poverty and at a time, unfortunately, when anti-Semitism in Eastern Europe made life very difficult. After serving in the army in the First World War, he attended Vienna University, studying chemical engineering, then getting a job for the German technology company Telefunken, where he became head of patents. However, in 1938, after Austria had been invaded, he, along with tens of thousands of other Austrian and German Jews, were sent to a concentration camp. Somehow his wife Claire, who was a German Catholic, managed to persuade the authorities to have him released a year later in 1939. On the proviso, he was deported to England. Apparently she smuggled a mandolin musical instrument into him and Charles used it to persuade the guard to let him see a lawyer. When the German bombing of England began, known as the Blitz, he decided to change his name from Karl Blitz to Charles Bliss. It was another year before Charles and his wife Claire were able to see each other. Claire eventually escaped from Germany to Greece, then travelled east to Shanghai, where she and Charles were reunited on Christmas Eve. However, when the Japanese occupied Shanghai in 1941, they and 23,000 Jewish refugees were placed into the Hongku ghetto. Now, at that point, Claire, as a German Catholic, was offered to claim her German citizenship, apply for a divorce and be released. She did not take the opportunity, instead staying with Charles in the ghetto where their daily existence was extremely tough. Now, I'm a great believer in Stoicism, but this story is frankly nothing short of heroic. How easy our lives are today compared to that era. Wallace living in poverty in Shanghai, Charles used his time to study Chinese characters, or Hanzi. He started to think of how a universal language could be developed where all countries could communicate via one set of symbols. When the war ended, Charles and Claire migrated to Sydney and settled here in Coogee, eventually moving to Vicar Street, where I'm located today, somewhere in the 1950s. Charles developed his universal communication system, initially calling it world writing, then changed it to cementography. He took a range of labouring jobs to earn a living whilst trying to get academic interest in it. He, it seemed he was flogging a dead horse for so many years, though Claire sent out a 6,000 letters to educators and universities trying to elicit some interest. Sadly, Claire passed away in 1961 before Charles had made any particular breakthrough with this new initiative. In 1965, Charles changed the name of his system again to Blissymbolics. In an amazing twist in 1971, Charles heard that in Canada, the Ontario Crippled Children's Centre had been using his system since 1965 to teach communication skills to children with cerebral palsy without him even realising. Initially he was delighted, but then realised they had been using it in a different way to which he intended. Legal action eventually ensued and copyright was lodged of his system with a licence in Canada. In 1974, Film Australia produced a documentary movie called The Symbol Man, which featured interviews with Charles discussing his system of communication. I'll place it on the link for you to watch in the post. 
if you watch it, you will see what a character Charles was and understand the science behind his communication system. In 1976, Bliss was made a member of Order of Australia for his work for handicapped children. He was also made an honorary fellow in linguistics at the Australian National University, an amazing and inspiring man that lived for many years here on Vicar Street in Coogee. I hope you enjoyed this story of Charles Bliss, yet another local legend who deserves to have his story and legacy preserved. Here's to a wonderful 2022, despite the challenges of last year, and always remember, your home is worth more with Adrian Bowe.